Good morning, Kathy Vick, Deeply Awake. And I think I would like to do a longer one today because I want to talk about um, some beautiful things I learned about my origins and it's just really, really pretty. Um, but I may be able to just put that in here. I was going to do... I was going to do a couple pretty extensive ones on uh, the lower energies, including arconic energy and um, the malevolent um, interstellar and interdimensional races that are or have been um, impacting us and all that. Because I have all that information and I have clarity about my role but um, the thing is that um, it just doesn't matter and I've, I've tried to get out the information and I've thought oh it'd be really great I could you know travel in those circles and get to know those people and um, and I could it'd be very nice to hang out with contactees since I'm a contactee that'd be really fun but it seems like price of admission is um, you have to acknowledge what's really going on and uh, figuring out what really what's really going on it took me 57 years it wasn't easy it's hidden a lot of it's hidden and it's in plain sight so uh, I've realized that I'm not going to be a mechanic in this regard um, I think that it'd be really helpful given I'm so expert at it that I um, do a talk about shadow work because um, I think it's misunderstood and maligned by people who are doing it and um, if they knew about what was going on they might have an easier time with it but even that you know if you're in, if you're having a dark night of your soul or a dark year of your soul if you're going through tremendous loss and change if things that were there yesterday are not here today or you are dealt uh, blows, you are dealt uh, with proof of how you have mishandled something and how you have hurt other people, whatever it might be. Don't you see? You're covered. You're in the middle of transformation. You are surrounded by legions of help if you're in that space. If you're just trying to get along and you're looking and you're not ever looking up and you know, that's fine. But when you're getting pelted and when the rug is being pulled out from under you and people are behaving weirdly and you're not able to get your needs met. Bravo. You're almost home. Because, you know, there is duality here. And um, and they're as above, so below. Big to little, little to, little to big. So um, that means that this um, presence, this um, pettiness and mercilessness that... Uh, really is what I think carves the heart out of people when they encounter someone who does not contain or understand mercy. That to me is, um, that's the end of the road for me. When I, when I, it doesn't matter how loving and how supportive, there, there are places you get with people and they are incapable they they don't under they really super don't understand mercy. And they may understand love. But to me, you know, mercy is compassion. I think compassion is uh is too veiled. I think it's been covered and uh its meaning is not readily accessible. I think that most people understand what mercy is. And it's the uh presence or the absence of that as your fallback position. 
actually, I think, determines how easy it is for you. And I was pitiless, merciless with myself because I couldn't understand something. And it was, it drove me mad. I had to divine discontent. I did. I had a big hunk and yod in my natal chart. And um, I had a question that I couldn't get answered. But I finally did. And the person who had the key is um, Alex Collier. I'm going to uh, put up a video from him. And it's, I'll let him talk about the dark. How's that? But I, I can assure you, um, these entities and the ones who buzz me, who are archons, and if you know you, if you know your exopolitics, you know what I'm talking about. They don't buzz people who don't matter. They they are so contemptuous of humans. Um, I intimidate them. I always have. I am. I was here to to have a little bit of a little bit of a tussle with them, and um, and I I I completed my mission in 2012. I I declared my space um, inviolate, and uh, and I banished them. I wasn't just banishing them in my space. Uh, enough of us do that. Our spaces, you know when your Merkaba is all lit up pretty as a Christmas tree? It's not a bubble of 27 meters. It is infinite. It connects with the galaxies, with the multiverses, with the song of songs. And when you're hooked up, um, well, it's just different. And, um, balance is restored. When we do this individually, and our Merkaba grows, you have to be re responsible for any energy that's in your fields, obviously. You have to know how to manage your fields. And you begin to realize that your fields hook up. And we are mobile. Nulls and nodes. Active nulls and nodes. When we, uh, when we plug back into the daily life. And with enough of us, um, I, I, the, the planet's co you know, covered with a geometric pattern that is um, sufficient to at least um, create a, a uh, frequency. And that's nice. So it matters more to me what we do in the future and what we do now than how we got here. But if you don't know how you got here, you're decapitated without memory. Uh, you, you don't have identity. This this lie we've been told, we we can't um, we can't tell the American public about the presence of you the the truth that UFOs are here, because we panic the herd. We couldn't possibly um, get rid of a money system, and um, go to any other kind of system, because people are so rotten that they then that they would kill and steal from each other if there wasn't the control of money. What do those things say about how we are we think about ourselves and what kind of contempt we're held in? That we're just savages. We are decapitated. We don't know right from wrong. It has to be put into a system that is that overlays us because we are decapitated. Well, you know, if you hook up and you, your heart with your head, with your eye, that energetic decapitation 
um, stops and a reintegration occurs. There's this talk that, you know, our, our DNA was sabotaged and, and there was something done to it and all this stuff. Whatever. Whatever. Whatever, whatever story you need to tell yourself. What matters is that as a two-strand, linear, three-dimensional DNA person, the other ten strands surround me like an egg. And I talk to that cloud, thinking it's my higher self, thinking that it's my guides. It's my DNA that is uncoupled from my physical double helix. And we quibble and, and draw rock paintings, cave paintings, about how it happened and why. And that kind of tells you where we're at, where our consciousness is at. We don't even know what happened. We're decapitated. So it's very important to gain that knowledge back. It's important to know ancient history. It is a requirement of, of um, integration. It, it, at least it was for me. And I, I don't think that it has to be conscious. This is so innate and so primal. It, it, what bubbles up into consciousness is what bubbles up into consciousness. But there is a process where the, um, the memory comes back. And I, you know, I videotaped that and actually cried when I was saying, I remember, I remember. It's just it's a very fascinating process. But of course, you, you know, you can't go from not for having zero to having um, infinite, infinite uh, objects or ideas or thoughts. It has to be um, appreciated in a way that can be helpful. So that's what that, that time process is for and the storytelling is for. And that's kind of neat. So I want to tell you my story and then I think I'll be done for now. I, I'm kind of surprised, but not not really, that um, I'm really not permitted to um, talk about my um, warriorship and uh, all that stuff. I say that what, what's, what's in my writing can stand. And if you ever want to t ask me for an old war story, well, I'll be happy to oblige you. But I think that should be over a sandwich or um, or or a piece of lemon supreme pie, and uh, not over the airwaves. And I'm truly sorry about that. If you're looking for answers for the um, the dark stuff, there's a lot of good information, and I say use your um, your heart and your soul as your GPS as you um, investigate, and don't get scared. It'll come to you as it needs to come to you. And if you are intent on knowing what's going on, you will know. But it may take a while. And you'll be tricked along the way. So, enjoy that. They are nothing but tricksters. <laughs> God. Uh, anyway. Um, what I want to tell you is that when I was listening to this fellow, Alex Collier, who worked extensively with the Andromedan since he was eight years old, contactee and an abductee, a contactee, but actively so, and it was he was, I love it, he was mentored. And I began to think about that. I began to wonder. The teachers, Pleiades, where am I from? Do I have a team? This team seems to be on loan from somebody else. I mean, the teachers, they're, they're me, but are they? All this stuff was going through my head, right? And he had um, said in one of his tapes uh, information about dolphins and whales, but only a teeny tiny amount, and just on the dolphins, really. 
And the only thing I wanted to know is where whales were from. Because I have said repeatedly, oh my God, do you want to know where you're from, Kath? How about if you take a listen to yourself? What have you said, girly? Here's what I've said. I know I'm a whale. I know I run the grids with the whales. I have extensive knowledge about a lot of stuff that's w w very whale-like. When I have my NDEs, when I have had really, really heightened periods, when I've seen myself with other entities, I'm a whale. They met me when I had my NDE. Okay. And I've also said whales aren't from here. Whales are... Um, there are some species that will never be filmed mating because they don't. They, um, they are um, truly multidimensional beings and they are elders. This place was founded by the Bata, by a race of ancients, of elders, and they disappeared. No one knows exactly who they are or what they are, but um, there are monuments and there are, there are um, manifestations of their work in all, all dimensions, all densities. And um, no one knows where any of that came from, but it's consistent, coherent, and it's from someone, something. Well, <laughs> they're guardians. They swim the grids and they hold it together. You want to know where the Patal are? Or what they've become, perhaps? It might be wise to look at those whales. And their language is uh, trinary. It uses depth, and it evokes color, and it evokes light, and uh, their language is, um, it's, it's really, they're poets, they're philosophers, they are, the whales are the ones that um, hold the akash of the planet, and they sing songs from our akash, like lullabies, into the grid, in love. benevolence itself, incarnate. Where are they from? I've waited a long time to know. And Alex, in his uh, travels, learned that uh, from the Andromedans, whales are from Cygnus A, Cygnus Alpha. And uh, that is um, understood to be what is known as Deneb. And I've talked about Deneb. Um, that's the star in the uh, constellation Cygnus, which was so important to the ancients. It's the Great Rift. Is it the... Northern Cross or the Southern Cross? And, um, yeah, sure, we get interested in the Orion um, and lo lots of different um, constellations. That That's an important one to the people he will hear first. And, um, and that's, that's where the whales come from? Hmm. So I went looking. Did a little research. 
every year I am exactly conjunct. I'm 12 minutes apart from Deneb on my birthday. Five minutes. No. Five degrees, seven minutes. Is that right? Five, eight. I don't know how the, what the things are, but five, eight. Degree and minute? Five degrees, seven minutes? Pisces. That's my birthday. That's Deneb. That's Cygnus A. That's where the whales come from. Oh, but it gets better. Then I went to the, um, to Wikipedia to learn about Cygnus A. It's a very unusual thing. It seems to be a black hole, but there is a structure within it, so it can't really be a black hole, but it's weird. And it emits radio. It's a quasar. And it all came home. I realized when I had that event in the end of April of 2012, I saw this brilliant, brilliant, brilliant light. The most beautiful light I'd ever seen. So holy. And loud as thunder, they said, the son of Antares is born. And there was such a sense of reverence and honor and joy and excitement and certainty and all these things and I heard over and over again quasar 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 after the break because I'd been on break and that happened in my car when I got back on shift I looked at the monitor and I looked at what I needed to know what a quasar looked what it, what it was it just had the name and it was the light that I'd seen. But when I went through the images, I began to cry. I was very moved because I knew I was not going to see what I had just seen. It wasn't photographed. It wasn't going to show up on the Google box. And that was really, that made me really sad. And now, and then I learned, it's a, it, 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 it and they've talked to me so much about that kind of stuff. EMF pulses and um, sound waves and how important sound is. And then two years ago, around this time of year, I'd been working so hard and had so many activations. They had worked with me with my with my blood and they had been putting me through the paces. And then I had a vagal experience, a, an out-of-body experience. And... Um, before it happened, a big beam of light went through my head. I had, I had collapsed on the floor and I I felt this thing in my head. It was a it was a beam, and it went one way and it went the other way and it went like that. And it was it was physical, but it was sound. It was sound, but it was light. And it was information, but it was physical. And I don't have the memory, but I have the picture of being lifted off the ground. And after that, I, I woke up and wow, I was a different person. It was bizarre. And I guess it's just putting all of it together. That was um, sort of a it, it was a process that, that took more than a day. <laughs> but the, the, the sense of safety, I feel, is so tremendous. It matters. Because in this instance, you know, it, it's um, having the convergence of facts is nice because each fact sort of um, serves to point to another one, which it, it's just all very coherent. So I've been walking around feeling like royalty. Just, I'm a representative of a people. 
but actually of two. I'm actually a lot more, but I've got um, a real investment. Cygnus is, uh, you know, it's all water. That's the Venus. And this Antares energy that started the um, activation process is very male, is very, very fiery, and it was required in the balancing and in my healing. And I am the son of Antares. I saw the water as um, M Mother or Magartha, and Antares as um, this new force that that came and um, interacted with the water and enlivened it. And together they became something far bigger and better than they could have been separately. So I'm a blending of those two um, realities. I have had visions of the people and I've had visions and uh, visitations with the whales. So yeah, I've done battle with Arconic energy since I was 13. They popped into my reality and said, hey, want to dance? The funny thing, and, and I was abducted and they returned me. It was, it was Greys, it wasn't the Archons. And it was kind of a mistake. And once they realized who they had on board, they got, they, what could they do? I was still amnesic though. Um, so I could tell you all about it. I am the real deal. And I'm important to them because I am powerful energetically. And uh, what better way to um, disable a threat than to um, thoroughly convince that threat that they're worthless, meaningless, insignificant, unimportant. I want you to think about that next time you put in a position where you're made to feel like shit. When you're hobbled, when you're imprisoned. And I think that's much better than thinking about the nasties who got into power and are, are fucking things up for the rest of us. It's, it, no. This, this comes uh, always back to remembering that there's nothing on the outside that isn't also somehow a process. It, this is, it is, if you want to say it's a holographic reality, I think that this is a better way of saying it. It's a multidimensional reality. I've been saying that. This is not a third dimensional reality. This is a twelfth dimensional reality depends on where your receiver is set and um, so it, it's incorrect to think it's a third dimensional dense dimens, dimensional reality because certainly there are there are, what we're dealing with is fourth dimension and people who are you know able to manipulate the fourth um, so and there are, if there are yogis living in the Himalayas who can bilocate, uh, do you think they're at the third density or the fourth density? No, they're physical, but they're at a much higher frequency. And um, they can do more with their physical body because they've trained it and because they think it's possible. Because they're quantum beings. And uh, their cloud of DNA is is hooked up to their two strands. So they're a bigger, better antenna. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been getting the information again and again that the human vehicle is biological technology. And you just have to learn the controls. And that has to do with consciousness. So I want to leave with you with two nuggets. I've already told you what Alex said about the whales, so why not give you two more nuggets? which are really just reverberations of what I was taught.
The first is that um, the love you withhold is the pain that you carry from lifetime to lifetime. That's the karma. You come back to fix the situations or to make good with the people uh, who um, there, there was there was a an impedance or a, a resistance to love, withholding of it or resistance to it. That's the work. So how about if you don't um, let anybody hold you hostage to what they perceive or say are lo unloving things, okay? And how about if you don't hold anyone hostage for not being loving to you in the past, in the present, or in the projected future? Let's get rid of that. Can you? And you realize that it's, it really is on you and what you do this day? And whether you are going to withhold love from others. And, uh, you know, it's the most important thing is you're the karma generator. Are you, are you withholding love from yourself? Are you giving yourself mercy? Or are you being merciless? Where are you being merciless with others? It's time to be asking those questions. That helps the biological technology come on board. And, you know, like, wake up. You, uh, you don't buy it. You kind of say yes to it. And part of it is, is um, taking responsibility and, and um, being a decent person and being loving, choosing love, choosing to share it, and not withhold it. And so that's really been helpful for me. Um, and um, I think I'll just leave you with that. There, there are a couple other nuggets, but I, I really, I, I think that's nice. Um, I know what I can. I know what I can do. I, it, it's like the day kind of structures itself. My mind structures itself. When I think about ah, so the idea here is to um, to not withhold love, but to let love flow. That it really helps. So I hope I hope that you find that helpful. Um. And I, I just don't think that it's wise to get too afraid. I've been getting information for about a week, along with this uh, origin information, that um, we're, we're just still, unfortunately, a little bit too uh, focused on what's going wrong, and uh, it, there's a whole lot going right. There was a big asteroid that was uh, said it was going to hit Earth uh, at, you know, at the end of May of 2018. And I saw the video of it a couple days ago, went whizzing by, and there were no parties about that. And there are lots of things going on, um, etherically. There are um, shifts occurring, and it's it's not it's not happening passively. It's happening actively. Um, and. Um, Applause is not the point. The point is the the, um, the work at hand. And sealing the door where evil dwells, all that means is just raising the vibration so it falls off of you like a tail. So what, how we got here is very important. Don't let anybody tell you that um, your need to know what happened here, the ancient history, is frivolous or dumb or stupid or wrong. No. Your ancestors want to talk to you. You are wanting to talk to you. 
because you are the ancestors. So, um, there comes a time when you just have to um, finally reach out and, and shake a hand of someone that you've been chasing a lifetime. And the funny thing is that as the, as the, the hands connect, the eyes go up, and you're looking at your own face. <laughs>